Hello, Marisha. Hi. How are you, Dee? Good, thank you. So we're just going to get right into it. And, Great. Uh, why don't you tell us about your background and how you got involved with this work? Well, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and I was always really interested in ecology, and I didn't have the same sort of opportunities out there as I did when I moved out west. Um, deeply interested in um, sustainable futures. I knew that there was something else other than the strip mall um, area where I grew up in, something that nourished community and um, had a healthy food system that um, could be in my future. So I went to the Evergreen Station, and that was where I first learned about permaculture. And uh, food security activist, I grow most of my own produce year-round and hope to encourage others to do the same. I think uh, my involvement happened in stages. At first, um, I was thoroughly indoctrinated into my, into um, the culture of kind of heroic, modern, modernist design culture, I would say, um, the ethic or the vision that um, through, through design, especially through aesthetic design, we could somehow change the world for the better. And I think I floated with that culture for... Um, something like a couple of decades through school and went into uh, the profession of architecture and planning. And I think I went about as far, I basically exhausted that vision. And I found that um, while I really care about engendering beauty in the world and I love creating aesthetic environments, um, I was finding that most against stuff I was interested in creating. So engaging in the kind of work that we do now, even at the beginning stages, really fueled me because um, the kind, this kind of work that we do, it, even though it's hard work and um, there are many challenges to it, uh, you can always create a way through every obstacle and at the other sort of, well, throughout the, the whole process, you end up building networks, building relationships growing as a person, and then manifesting the most beautiful things, beautiful things that I've never been able to imagine in advance. So um, everything's a surprise. I'm always getting to employ design, except now the field is broadened and it's far more social than it was before, the whole process. Mm. Well, uh, on that, with, with this work, I feel a real important question is to describe what is permaculture. In a, in a way that's easy to uh, understand and process, and so other people could relate what that is to others. Well, so permaculture with, is a combination of the words permanent and culture. And um, so permaculture is an exploration of how we can make design choices in our lives on this planet um, that do no harm to other species and um, support our needs. Um, in a really good way. So the permaculture um, discipline covers um, ecology and soil building and water systems and home building and um, economics and gardening. Um, looks at all the different things that humans need in their lives and how we can design in good um, ecological ways um, that support other species on this earth to proliferate as well. The discussion around permaculture so we can see how um, we can be ecological designers with larger systems and larger larger projects. Um, so until recently, permaculture has been something that individuals might practice, families might practice, and then some communities might practice to holistically at a village sort of scale. Now I'm interested in looking at whole cities and whole systems, transportation networks, public space networks, individual public spaces, um, but fundamentally, I want to see the city as an organism. And the permaculture lens really enables us to do that. Um, it points out to us that there are principles by which we can engage any challenge and bring things back into balance. Um, and in the context, it starts off by just saying human beings belong on the planet. And at any scale that we in, can inhabit the landscape, in any sort of size of, of group or, you know, urban construct, um, we do belong here. And the systems that we create and the um, cycles and flows through which we're consuming or we're uh, producing can somehow be brought into accord. And that's not all that hard 
because our, our very nature is in many ways uh, inherent to the planet. You're mentioning the work you do in cities, and you have an organization in Portland called City Repair, and it, it's directly involved with the, this type of work, seeing the culture and our relationship as a, as a whole organism. Could you discuss a bit about City Repair and what you sure. have going on in Portland? City Repair is kind of an overarching term and an organizational structure that facilitates people becoming engaged to become involved in the landscape where they're living and to communicate with others that they live among to try to roll back this endemic sense of isol epidemic sense of isolation which is um so characteristic of of the American city to bring people outside to talk about their issues to convert them into opportunities to reflect their conversation and their visions in a transformed landscape so in, in, you know, in many ways, city repair uh, is kind of, I know it's, it's hard to really dissect exactly because it's urban design, it's um, urban food systems, uh, it's sort of re-understanding how we relate to the whole concept of waste so that waste becomes a resource. I mean, city repair is almost anything that people want to make it. They live in the urban environment, they see an issue that they want to come to grips with, that they're passionate about, and their engagement is a way of enacting the, re the process of repair. I mean, when we talk about unsustainable patterns, exactly what's going on here, but I know that I can do something about it. And as they begin that engagement, they start to learn. And as they learn, they become more creative and powerful, and then in groups, they begin to undertake larger scale transformations. So the city ends up looking like the people's vision 